Thank you. What I want to say here is that I believe that all is PSI. I came to a conference which is telling us that we, it's a third conference, which tell us that we should look for deeper level theory. I believe, I feel, we do not need one. Therefore, I really uh, very uh, fortunate and I'm very pleased that I was allowed to, uh, to talk here. I talked to organizers, talked to jurors, that this is my opinion, this is why I want to be here. Still, why it's important for me to be here? Only when there are disagreements, physics can go forward. So I understood that in this conference, there will be many people who disagree. I will try to persuade why this position is feasible. And everyone who disagree, unfortunately, uh, you'll have to email me because I have to run to a plane immediately after. <laughs> but uh, please do, because it, this is a way I, uh, I can understand better. Or I think all of us, when we'll uh, discuss and disagree with each other, can go forward. Uh, OK. So consider the standard quantum mechanics, textbook quantum mechanics. Textbooks more or less accept von Neumann. And von Neumann says there are two processes. There is this uh, wave function psi evolving according to the Schrodinger equation. And when there is a measurement, there is a collapse. Something which I can, this is my drawing. Uh, there is this big wave function. And there is a one which uh, collapses here, here. This, these are measurements. And now I'm here in this particular world with these collapses, because it was collapsed to this world. Um, the quantum mechanics tell us that all, from my point of view, all what is is just this wave function, nothing else. Uh, we need Schrodinger equation to see how this big wave function evolve. Uh, we need these collapses at measurements, maybe kind of by fiat von Neumann, or maybe we can uh, have some kind of GRW pair collapses, which also fit. Still, we have a wave function, and I think it's OK. The wave function, this is what the reality is. Uh, this is not exactly enough. This is mathematics. This is mathematical part of the theory. We have to add something. We have to add that our experience is really supervened on this wave function. This is a postulate. There is some mathematics, a wave function, and there is our, our experience. The role, we have to explain it. So we have to say that experience and this wave function, they go together. Experience supervene on this wave function. There is also Born rule, because uh, there are many kind of possibilities. And uh, we have to say with which prob what is the probability that we go to one and not to another one. Uh, there are many, uh, many problems with this. There are I think I understand the reason why many people look for something different, because there are things which are not so easy to understand. To go from the wave function to our experience is not so, hard, not so easy. So one problem which was mentioned here, and which I will try to see why, how it can be solved, is that experience correspond to wave function, but the wave function lives in three n dimension it's in configuration space, something very different from what we, we see around. I'm going here, if I want to go into the link in three dimension, I go here and take this glass of water. It's all in three dimension, and, but the wave function, I believe I'm a wave function. And so it looks like it's not solvable. I say it's not so problematic. Uh, Schrodinger wave function. Uh, uh, so, why is this? Uh, uh, what other solution? There is a bomb solution. Says there is a wave function, but also some Bohmian particles, and the Bohmian particles live in three dimension. And I believe that for Bohmian mechanics, we have to add a postulate: experience Bohmian positions. Bohmian position in three dimension. The theory is understandable, easily understandable. Um, some modern uh, GRW, GRW flushes. Flushes are in three dimensions. So uh, easy to understand our experience. If we connect experience to flushes and not to kind of standard GRW, which talk about the wave function, then it's easy to understand the connection between the theory, mathematical theory, 
and all around us. There are flashes all of, in every place where are people sitting and me sitting and glass is here. Uh, glass. I think so somebody brought a very nice picture about Bomen, but it's the same picture will be uh, is good for GRW flashes with cats in points and everything. I think, I think it was yours, yeah? Uh, ah, yes. Ah, thanks. So these are clear. This is not so clear. When we have a wave function, three n dimensions, so how I can understand the rea reality, my experience, when I believe that the all what is is just a wave function? So I, uh, I can realize that according to the Van Neumann postulate, every time um, we make a measurement, there is a collapse. Moreover, what's measurement? Every time this Macroscopic bodies like this will kind of go to superposition of macroscopically different positions. There is a collapse. It cannot be the, in a wave function. The glass cannot be in a superposition. I cannot be in a superposition. All macroscopic objects are well localized. If I try to write write down the wave function of the whole universe, I can realize all macroscopic objects are really in product state and live in three dimensions. My center of mass in three dimensions, the center of mass of my finger, of everything microscopic, live in three dimensions. If I want to drink, uh, or I want to move, push, whatever, everything in three dimensions, all interaction in three dimensions, to live, it's to interact. Interaction in three dimensions, all microscopic bodies in three dimensions. Therefore, I think we live in 3D, we understand it. Even the mathematically, all together, it's in 3n dimension, and I understand I have molecules, molecules, atoms. In atoms, there are electrons which are, have to be entangled, otherwise it's not stable. Electrons in, um, in my atom are, live in 3n dimension. I cannot otherwise describe it. But they not, if I interact, I interact by some big bodies, maybe molecule which then will be well localized. So everything really in 3D. We live in 3D, and the important thing of this wave function for to explaining our experience are in 3D. So uh, we, I experience this correspond to the wave function of the world, the collapsed world, the Van Neumann world, the GRW Perl world, uh, which is everything, all macroscopic things, and 3N dimension. OK, so I think this problem, I would say, is solved. But I see also another problem. There is this collapse. I don't like collapse. Collapse has randomness and action at a distance. I don't believe in these things. But all everything which I studied in my it's, it's, at school, at graduate school, in university, have no such things. The only place where this action at a distance and randomness is this collapse. I don't want to accept it. Just to show this. If I, have, if I say that everything is wave function and collapse, I need, I, I have randomness. Let's say I have a photon here and here. It's state A plus B. I can write it maybe in this Fox state, and then locally, there is a local description here. This is a complete local description, this density matrix, the same here. This density matrix tells me that if I'm trying to look if the photon is here or not here, I have probability half to find it and probability half not to find it. It's random by definition. This is the formalism. So I have randomness if I look for a photon here. And then I have action at a distance. If I decide to look for a photon here, I will change things there. Because after measurement, if I find it, this is a new density matrix. If I don't find it, this is a new density matrix. It's different from the density matrix was, which was before. My action, measurement, changed the density matrix from this one to one of these ones. It's a real change, real action at a distance. Peaceful distance, whatever, I cannot signal it, but I make change at a distance. I don't believe in this kind of things. I think it's an unfortunate property. If I can have physics without it, I prefer it without it. How I can have it without it? Uh, again, if no measurement, you see no change. Measurement change, so I don't like it. There is other uh, possibility. If I say there is no collapse, 
If there is no collapse, then measurement is described by this just entanglement here. I, I look if there is a particle here or not, my measuring device, maybe me, became entangled. If I look on my second part of the photon, look on the photon and the density matrix of a photon, it's no change. Because in originally in this state or in this state, the density matrix of a photon remains the same. So any, whatever I measure, do here, measure, rotate my photon, whatever I do, nothing happened whatsoever here. So if I say there is no collapse, action at the distance disappear, randomness disappear, because randomness, it was just for outcome of quantum measurement. So how can live without it? What I say, it's a many word interpretation. Every time I make measurement, everything happened sure, with certainty. And no change far away in the whole universe. So this is what I believe. Everything is psi. It's a big psi. No collapse. So the picture is really like this. This is a picture. All words are real. Now, this, of course, opens new problem for explaining experience. And, uh, but I say it's also solvable in a very similar way like we explain uh, standard quantum mechanics. Uh, we have all these things which we had before. We have Schrodinger equation for this big wave function. And I postulate my way to introduce uh, many, many word picture. I say, let's take the collapse wave function. Let's take everything we study uh, at school about, uh, about collapse. The wave function, the collapsed wave function, it's part of my definition. When I want to make correspondent to my experience, I need this. I use the same definition of, of, the, uh, of the word wave function. Every time I make measurement, there is a splitting of words, there are many words. But now, I, by definition, I am local object. I cannot experience superposition. I cannot live in two words. I live, every one of me live in one word. Every time I make measurements, there are more of me, but every one of me still live in one word and experience. And which word is the same word? Like we say, if we, GRW uh, says a collapsed word, or Van Neumann says uh, just after the measurement, there is a well-defined word. This is a word which is. So there is one more thing, one more difficulty, which some find very big one. And uh, so this is the first one. I say every one, there are many of them. Not There is no any special one. There is a special one. Now, now I'm talking to you, it's in one of them. But I'm sure that there are many as a parallel one. If I would use my uh, word splitter in the home page, or use word splitter on the iPhone, whatever, I'm sure there are some splitting, and I'm pretty sure there are some other words. So the other problem is probability. Probability. In many words, what I say is that I make a measurement, A happened and B happened. The, problem, the fact that it's deterministic, it's not a real problem, because there are many cases when in, in deterministic classical mechanics we can introduce ignorance. But now, if I know the whole wave function, I still, this is, I can, I can be aware about everything, and uh, I feel that I feel only one outcome, I know that there is another outcome, but A happened, B happened. I cannot define probability. So I introduce a different postulate. Instead of a born postulate, when with A happened, then one of the words happened, I say that if I make a measurement, and when I make a measurement, I close my eyes. I don't know which, what is the outcome. But the outcome already happened. The splitting already happened. Then I postulate that probability for myself location, what I don't know, it's where am particular I am. I know everything. I know that there is I in this word and I in this word. If I make here measurement, I, there is one here and there is one here. But if I close my eyes, I still don't know which one I am. So I put here a postulate that I am according to like Born postulate. The probability of to my, find myself is according to quantum mechanics, what I call measure of existence. I say some words exist more than others. They all real the same way. But in, the, in, in some sense, they're bigger than others. They have more ability to interfere. If I try to interfere, if some super technology will interfere one, so this one has more power than this one. OK, so this is kind of a talk saying that the wave function is good enough, size all. But 
uh, I was, ple uh, was very pleased to see many two-state vectors and many weak, weak measurements in this conference. And uh, maybe uh, one third of my works about two-state vector formalism. So now I say that psi is all. Psi is just the one which is going forward in time. So what's about backward evolving quantum state? Do we need it? What's <coughs> and I say, we do need it too. It's helpful. Uh, every time we make a measurement, measurement is um, like uh, Ronald Bergman Leibovitch which uh, said, every time there is a one wave function going forward and another one going back backward. All results, there are two results, go two here. Here there are three, three goes also backward in time, every time. And I found some for my, my I kind of trying to bring it to every talk uh, of myself, one example, which it shows me where it's important to talk about the backward evolving wave function. Uh, so everything really, in some places, in some cases, it's important to describe two, psi and phi, two state vector description is important. And this is an example which I uh, find that it's important to talk about two state vectors, otherwise things are very strange. I have a nested Max Zender interferometer. If I send a photon, its wave function going like this. And I want to consider past of pre and post selected photons, the one which started here and ended here. Now, the standard way to say, everyone would say, okay, it started here because this is uh, tuned in such a way it cannot go here, so it looks like it should take this way. This should be the past of the photon. And this is very convincing, but I believe it's not true. And because it's not true, the two-state vector formalism is helpful. Let's see what's happening with backward evolving wave function. The, the detection creates a backward evolving wave function, and this looks like this. Let's look to, together. Now, together we see here in the no there are both of them, and this is normal. And here the, the photon was here, correct? But also backward and forward evolving wave function meet here, not on the way to it, not on the other way. They also meet here. So I say the photon was also here. What I claim, we, we made an experiment showing this. We put all mirrors vibrating, and we saw here, only photons which come here, saw vibra frequency of this, this, and this mirror, not this one. So we see this strange effect. Normally, you would say it would never come here. It cannot. It starts from here. It cannot reach this. But we saw these things. So I believe that there is a uh, really weak trace on this line and inside here. This is what I really believe every time we make an experiment, start from here to here. And this can be explained only by two-state vector description. Two-state vector tell us where the both wave function are present. This is where the photon, the particle was. Now, if I, uh, this is really the picture. But I have to say that this backward evolving wave function is not as ontological as the forward one. Backward evolving function is important only for me in this world. If I will look on all experiment in all worlds together and put the backward evolving wave function all together, like if I here, some photons come out here. So if, if I'll take this photon, this photon, put it backward in time, they will not go here. It will be destructive interference. It will go only here. So if I look only on, on forward evolving wave, uh, if I look on all of them together, the picture will be like this. The total backward evolving wave function in the whole world together, it's just the, the forward evolving wave function. There is no difference. So for us, in particular words, the backward give additional uh, ontology. So this is a summary. I believe that we can accept that the only ontology in the world, no flashes, no bombing, no uh, any, the only thing which is, is just the wave function. Uh, and uh, now the universal wave function. To explain experiences, we have to work hard because it, there is no di very simple and direct correspondent to our experience. We have to work hard and it's useful uh, to, to, dis to define the word wave function, the part of this big wave function. It's useful for us. This word wave function for all ex ex important things live in three dimensions. Uh, and um, in here, it's explained in this word wave function, there are this randomness and non-locality, non-belt correlations. 
but uh, only for us and uh, not for the whole, the whole story. Uh, and again, it's useful inside the word wave function to consider backward evaluate wave function because it helps to understand what's going with the microparticles going interferometer. Every time I want to ask what's going on inside some interferometer, then two-state vector is helpful. Thank you. <laughs>